Welcome back to our sixth video of uh, writing a convolutional neural network for image classification. Uh, in the previous video, we uh, ran through the, uh, the training loop and uh, we noticed that uh, we definitely have a decrease in, in the loss value, but uh, we weren't able to check the accuracy and most importantly, we weren't able to test the model as the model is going through each epoch we weren't able to test the model on the test data set. So that's exactly what we are going to implement here. And before being able to do that, we have to write a function that does these capabilities functionality for us. So I will simply call it a check accuracy function. And remember that a check accuracy function needs two important inputs. One is a data loader. I will simply call it a loader. And the other one, obviously, is a model. At the beginning, we need to uh, set some values to zero. And that is first number of corrects. Obviously, we want to calculate the number of corrects after each epoch. And that's because only by having the number of corrects, one can calculate the accuracy. So. Uh, we'll set it to zero and we also need the number of samples. So number of corrects basically over the number of samples gives you the accuracy, some, some, some measurements of the accuracy. And we need to put the model on the eval mode. So a PyTorch model definitely has this uh, eval flag and that's basically what it does is that it puts the model on the evaluation mode meaning that no gradients will be calculated for any calculation that is being done by the model. So now we need to write the test loop. And test loop uh, basically is very similar to a training loop, except the fact that it doesn't have epochs. It's just one run through the data set. And uh, in each of these loops, you can imagine that the assumption is that the model is what we have after one epoch. And now I'm going to run my test data set into it in order to see what is the result. And uh, before starting the, the loop, we need to start with a with statement and say torch.nograph. And basically, this allows us to tell PyTorch that this is, a, this is not a training loop. We don't want you to calculate any grad. So don't even as, um, allocate any processing unit to calculation of grad. We, don't, we want everything to be as efficient as possible. Now I define the for, and this for loop is getting x and y from like, basically getting mini batches of test data. So x and y in loader. Now a test loop has also four components just like the training loop that had four components. There's one tiny difference to them but let's write the components at, at the beginning. Obviously sending the data to the device. Next is preparing the data for the model. Next, forward. That's the forward propagation. Now, we don't have backward propagation as we had in the training loop because backward propagation is when you uh, go backward through the model, taking into effect the gradients, and uh, you do backward propagation in order to update the weights and biases. We're not doing that. We're not doing training. What we want to do is to calculate the accuracy. So one by one, sending the uh, data to the device again, I always mention this, this is the simplest thing that one can learn from PyTorch. Y is equal to your, your variable to the device, right? And same as a training loop, we don't have any preparation. So I leave that as empty. Now the forward loop is very simple. Y hat is 
model x and uh keep in mind in, in the training loop we had some like loss calculation and running loss we're not doing that again loss calculation is for the training we're not doing that so we don't want that but in the calculation of the accuracy we need to have some new stuff written down first of all y hat is the thing that we want to see how accurate it is so uh, the one thing that we have to do is to say the uh, underscore and predictions are basically y hat dot max and we will also give it the value of one now what are we saying here keep in mind y hat has a, a one vector per member of the mini batch so if you have like for example 20 images in the mini batch your y hat is 20 vectors and these vectors are uh, basically vectors of 100 and uh, 102 elements because that's the number of classes that we have and if for example the prediction of the model is that um, image number one belongs to class number 60 the most of the values uh, all of the values in 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 the in the first vector are close to zero but the element 60 has a value that is closer to one now this just means that if you calculate the max of each vector that value is the probability of the the class that we are predicting that the model is predicting this image belongs to but we don't care about that value we mostly care about the element of the maximum value that element is our prediction because the element pertains to the class so uh, by declaring this value one the dot max function does returns two things to us the 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 value of the maximum probability which goes to underscore and we put it into underscore because we just we mean that it's meaningless for us we don't care whether it's like 0.7 or 0.75 or or even one we don't care as long as it's the maximum that's good enough we care about the element of that maximum value and that gets returned as the prediction so that's why we always use this terminology here and now that I have this I can simply add and basically I, I do have the number of corrects because the number of corrects are basically predictions that are equal to y and uh, no matter how many they are those the, the amount of them should be equal to the number of corrects and uh, yeah basically the amount of them so let's say there's five out of ten some some of those five ones becomes ten becomes five and then we add it to number of corrects and number of samples is going to be added to the uh, basically uh, we can say um, y hat dot shape or predictions dot size. Yeah, predictions dot size, but uh, the zero because the, the number of mini batch. Now, uh, keep in mind this: the number of mini batches are known, except for the number of samples within each mini batch is known, except the the final mini batch. So the entire thing tries to address that variation in the final mini match and uh, at this point we're done this goes through the entire data set that is in the loader and loader in this case would be presumably our test loader so all the data will be uh, going through the model and we will experience what it gets to calculate the accuracy uh, we do want to calculate the um, the accuracy and we also want to print it so let's just print and uh, again I would start with an f string and that would be the accuracy would be equal to um, number of corrects over number of samples 
and uh, this will give us some value we can we can basically uh, multiply it by 100 that that is not going to calculate it for us it's just going to show the number of corrects on top of number of samples but we can calculate it by actually putting them on top of each other so number of corrects divided by within the curly brackets divided by number of samples and uh, multiply it by 100 so that it will give us the sort of like a percentage and I don't want it to have like crazy number of decimals so uh, a 0.2 F would be perfect for us I would say that's it but don't forget that at the end of it we would put the model on the train mode again so that's it let's just copy paste our training loop so this was just a definition of the function we go to the training loop and at the end when everything is done what we are going to do is to call our check accuracy function and I will basically do it under the print of the loss so basically check accuracy of the basically the loader being the test loader and the model being the model so let's just run this one again it will be run for four epochs and on top of the loss value now we should receive the accuracy of the model and this accuracy is not the accuracy of the model on the training data set this is the accuracy of the model on the test data set and I promised you to explain why the test data set is important to um, get the accuracy from. The reason is that uh, when our model is being trained on the trained data, it is seeing the data itself and it's learning which image has which um, label. Uh, there are some, um, there are like, I guess, a humongous amount of literature and information on the problem of overfitting, and you can search and learn it. But basically, the idea is that sometimes our model tries to learn as much as information as it can on the data set that it's receiving in the training, that it forgets how actually it needs to focus on the important features that are actually repeat gets repeated amongst different labels instead it just learns tiny um, maybe not that much important features that belongs to one specific image and in that case when the model gets trained you will check its accuracy on the test on the trained data set and it has a very good accuracy but in, when you introduce the model to an image that it's not seen yet all of a sudden the model cannot even predict it it means that the model is overfit so we always want to check the accuracy of the model on the data set that the model hasn't seen yet and that guarantees that we're not experiencing overfitting so uh, we got an error by going into the check accuracy it exactly happened in the check accuracy and it it happened right when it tried to calculate the number of corrects and it says the size of a tensor is 64 must match the sizes of size of tensor 1 or 2 at non singlet in dimension 1 64 is our batch, mini batch. But, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. 
I know what's wrong and what is wrong is that what we get as y hat or like as yeah what we get as y is a one hot uh, vector that has one or two what we get as the for prediction is here uh, sorry yeah what we get here as predictions are the number of labels but what we get as y is the one hot vectors somehow in this case we need the actual um, numbers rather than the one hot one hot vectors so it basically means that we could simply add another line of code here and say uh, labels are equal to y dot max of one so that we would get the labels back from the one hot vectors that we made from the labels initially and and here we would compare the predictions with the labels so this should go and shouldn't have any problem um, let's see how it goes Okay, so uh, all the four epochs are done. As you can see, um, we didn't experience that much of a training. Uh, although the model, uh, considering the fact that we have 102 classes, uh, the results of a random guess, uh, the accuracy of random guessing of the labeling, uh, the, of the label of, uh, of the flowers would be less than 1%. So we're, we're doing 30 times better than uh, one percent uh, accurate because the accuracy currently is thirty percent, but um, the model really doesn't improve in terms of the uh, the accuracy. Uh, although we are having uh, the loss function decreases, one of the reasons why the uh, the, the the model didn't improve is that uh, I, I did not, uh, we basically pre um, retrained the model. So if, if you notice, the loss value is very low and it's very close to what it was. Whereas um, previously when we run the uh, model training, it started from 352 of loss. And the model, I didn't reset the notebook, so the model basically uh, got retrained after this. If, if we uh, remove the uh, so in, in another war, it was the epoch, this is epoch 8, right? And uh, if we delete the model, let, let me just do one thing, and I would say basically uh, model is equal to my CNN. Let's just initiate the model from scratch as we did here and send it to device and we run the model again so that you would see that our um, accuracy improves but it actually doesn't improve as much it stops at 30 percent accuracy and that is mainly because of the fact that we are using a very very uh, low level model with, with very few amount of training data if our, our our number of images are not that low, but if it was like three classes and then 9,000, 8,000 images, that was good. But here we have 102 classes and 80. It means that per each class, we have 80 images and that's literally nothing for having an efficient amount of training. We're still learning how to predict with 30% accuracy and that's impressive but it could be much better. So let's just see, now that the model is initialized, how does these 
accuracies improve. Okay, perfect. So uh, I, I let the four epoch pass and uh, we started from a high loss. Not that much of a good accuracy, but um, we were able to reach the 40% accuracy. There's a point where you'll see that um, while your loss is decreasing, your accuracy is not increasing that much. That is an indication that you're getting close to the basically not having any training happening. And uh, there are techniques that we're, we're going to go through them in the uh, next video series uh, to number one, uh, you shouldn't let this happen. Basically, at the very uh, exact moment that the training, uh, more epochs of training does not lead into more test accuracy, you need to stop your training. And that is mainly because you're going to go uh, over overfit your model by letting the model to get trained more than that while your test accuracy is not increasing. And uh, the other uh, techniques are regularization that... Um, basically allow us to push the boundaries of capabilities of a model to get trained even more and uh, not to let the the test accuracy to plateau uh, as uh, like in in such early uh, epoch number but uh, keep in mind uh, we have only 8000 images and 102 uh, classes. It means just uh, that on average every class has even less than 80 images and that's a very low number of images to train a model with and we're still getting 40% accuracy. Always try to compare the uh, the performance of the of your model with um, the and your your baseline for this comparison should be the random guess uh, accuracy. If you give this data set to a, an algorithm that randomly assigns classes with no training, nothing, just randomly generating numbers from uh, 0 to 101, then uh, you're going to get, on average, you're going to get an accuracy of less than 1% because you have 102 classes. So we're doing 40 times better than that. And it's great, and our uh, accuracy could still increase if we let the uh, model run for some more epochs, or do regularization, or have uh, used a much sophisticated model. But uh, we're going to go through them in the next video series, but uh, for this video series, we're going to keep it as it is. Uh, the only thing left to say is to how to add the progress bar and things like that to our model, which we're going to cover in the next video. I'll see you there. Thanks.